Now we learned to draw our hand. It's a small step to draw our hand with something in it. So step by step we're learning to draw things as they are. But it's still manageable because we're doing it through the viewfinder and the viewfinder is something that we can hold. Um, I know the viewfinder is a little bit wobbly and hard to manage. There's an art to using the viewfinder. But if you manage to do it, one way or another, it's a big tool. It's also not, in a way it's very accurate, you have the proportions right. But in a way it's not accurate because the lines are mostly either too fat or too, too wobbly, just too, too insecure. Don't worry about it, it's about the proportion. I want you to get the proportions right. So now we're going to, to do the same thing with an object in our hands. And then we're also going to do a lily, drawing a lily upside down. Remember the five perceptual skills of learning to draw are first there's the line, then we have negative shapes, then we have the relationships, and then we have the values. So first, now the first lessons, we have looked at the line and we understand the line. I like, as a subject, I like to have lilies because they have a lot of negative shape around them that are very visible, very, very well seen and observed. Use the viewfinder. In this case, though, I made an outline already for you. But I drew the negative shape before I drew the lily. And you're going to continue drawing the outline of whatever you see on that picture. Uh, again, do it as meticulous as possible. And then we're going, well, let's go to the demonstration and, and it will be all clear to you. If you don't have the PDF, the, the example, please ask me and I will email it to you and try to have the same a full sheet, full piece of paper in A4, uh, the same size as what we are using. Let's go look at the demonstration. So now we have our hand and we have something in it. I have these clippers, but it could be a shell or it could be another tool, scissors, glasses, whatever it is that you can hold in your hand, but is not too, too overpowering, you still see your hand. When you move the viewfinder, bring it right back, close one eye, remember, and then do as many uh, outlines as possible and as secure as possible, as uh, accurate as possible. Now after this you're going to put it away, the whole thing, and then you really look at the, the subject in all earnest, in all earnesty, in all whatever. So this is just a tool, it's not what you're going to see later. Um, this is the outline, put it upside down, have a white something behind it. You see the grid lines. Now make the grid lines on your piece of paper exactly the same as they are in the viewfinder, which means you have the template is in the inside. Then tone the paper, smudge it so that it's even, and then copy exactly the lines that you have drawn with the object in your hand. Uh, this will keep us busy for a little bit, so I'll let you watch the video and follow all the steps as you see me doing here.
this takes a long time I am speeding up the video so that you don't you're not wasting your time but um, as I'm more secure of what I'm seeing I'm making the lines really thick and uh, I'm doing that even more here but now I really see what I'm looking at so now I already have the proportions I see what the object is I see how it could fit in my hand now I'm going to with hatching and cross hatching making the darkest dark dark and um, there is a difference slight difference between the handles of the thing and the shadow but it's it's very subtle all these subtleties you're going to see when you really look at the thing yourself the viewfinder can never do that for you so also in this one take your time look at it very precisely but again you already now have your uh, proportions you have the thing in your hand as it really is so adjust this as much as you can and with hatching and cross hatching you're going to shade the hand and the object this is quite amazing actually that it works like that that you really got it all um, as it is and not as how you think it is don't think too fast that you already know how the thing looks like because the mind plays tricks with you the handles are very dark so the the the, the pencil is soft too so put more pressure on it hatch and cross hatch uh, you don't have to go the directions like I do it but take it step by step anyway because there are subtleties in the darkness some of the parts are shaded and some of the parts are actually really disappearing into the hand itself it becomes all black and and you will learn to see these subtleties more and more as you do all this more and more then after this we're going to look at a lily and with the viewfinder I did it for you and you only have to fill in you only have to copy it so just watch the videos watch the demos and if you have any questions I will hear it I think it speaks for itself good luck
So I'm not really measuring anything. I am eyeballing it and my eyes go really fast from one segment to the other so that I can correct. Sometimes I'm too wide, too big, too... So then I have to correct it. And that's how you need to work as well. The best thing is to not think too much. Don't think about what you see. And I think this is actually easier because it, the shapes are fairly abstract. I mean, it's not a face of somebody or a hand or a foot. So you actually give it up pretty fast and say, okay, well, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I don't care because I'm just copying everything as meticulous as possible. And that's what you need to do. Uh, as, as you could listen to it, I have a little music. I'm looking outside. I see the people come, come by and I'm just having a good time. I surrender really to the time that I'm going to spend with my drawing and, and enjoying that moment. If you are too restless, and especially when you're at home, then or there's too many things going on at home, then uh, that might be hard. It might be easier to do it in class, but uh, maybe not. It's also good exercise to see if you can really close yourself off <clears throat> of the surroundings and everything that's going on to just ignore it, of course, except when there's a roof leak or the house is on fire. There are exceptions, but you can tell all the people in the house that you really want to be left alone for, let's say, an hour. Uh, something else I want to say is that I do... The, the lines right now are, are very thin. They are very light. I use an HB. Actually, I think it's a 2B. But I really want to have them as light as possible. And after a while, I'm going to make thick lines when, I, when I'm sure that they're in the right place. Do I make a mistake? Probably. But I know it's good enough and everything fits. That's another thing. If, if you end up somewhere and things don't fit, then you, you want to be able to correct it. So now I'm ready for the, for the stronger lines to put them in uh, as I see them fit. So don't start with that. I also have seen people who make like 10 different lines because they don't, they can't choose which one is the right one. Be aware of that. And you have to choose one eventually anyway. If you have a ton of lines, I don't know what I'm looking at. But you cannot start with one line. That takes a lot of confidence. So don't ask that of yourself either. Do it very thin, change it, course correct, uh, erase it, and do it again. This is a fun exercise. I always like doing this. I hope you do too. And then we're going to the next one.